Driving at Home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. Hey, y'all. We're back with another episode of Driving at Home with everyone's favorite housing economist, Dr. Claire Losey. This is Danielle Hammett, Deputy Director of Communications at ABOR. I'm filling in for our CEO, Emily Shinever, who is at an industry conference this week. Hey, Claire. Hey, Danielle. Thanks so much for having me. Well, team, we've got a treat for you this week. Our May Central Texas housing market report drops tomorrow, but we're going to give you a sneak peek of those numbers today. Claire, what can agents expect in tomorrow's report? So let me preface my response by saying that I believe a month over month comparison as opposed to our typical year over year comparison that we use to be more relevant for today's market conditions. And the reason from that primarily stems just from the sheer fact that the Austin housing market peaked in April and May of last year, 2022, posting record high home sales prices of $550,000. So comparing a market that is currently readjusting to broader macroeconomic conditions, including those higher mortgage rates, to a market that was really marked by unsustainable growth gives us some cause for pause. So with that being said, moving on to our month-over-month numbers, and I should note that these month-over-month comparisons are seasonally adjusted, the median sales price in the Austin MSA, which measured $467,500, was essentially flat from April to May. But sales did tick up considerably over the past month, coming in at about 2900 in May, which was nearly a 16% increase. Meanwhile, the close to original list price ratio also ticked up, hovering around 94% in May, which broadly indicates to us that sellers are pricing their homes more accurately the first time around and buyers are more responsive to those prices, right? And we should say too that here is where the expertise of a realtor really comes into play, working with that designated professional who is going to help you price your home correctly the first time around and help you get it sold quickly is really, again, beginning to show up in the data more and more. Meanwhile, days on market decreased from 72 days in April to 65 days in May, while month's inventory at 3.4 months actually reached its highest level since September of 2012. So we're beginning to see that supply is climbing and we're entering a little bit of a more balanced market in which the supply of homes is more commensurate to the ensuing demand for those homes. And then a couple of final stats, total sales dollar volume increased considerably from April to May, climbing 14% to just over $2 billion in May. And then lastly, active listings remained essentially flat while new listings rose about 4% month over month. And then finally, pending sales declined about 4% month over month, which was likely a result of the uptick in mortgage rates that we saw in May. You know, you mentioned this last week, but it's worth explaining again. Um, some of those higher interest rates may be scaring off some buyers that say, oh, I, I just don't know if I could afford a home. Um, but with those higher interest rates, but home prices are normalizing with the market at large. How is that unlocking purchasing power for home buyers, those two things together? And we should highlight here that this phenomenon is that being the combination of higher mortgage rates and moderating home prices is somewhat unique to the Austin MSA. I mean, on a national basis, home prices have remained essentially flat. So the uptick in mortgage rates has caused a decline in home purchasing power of about 8 to 9 percent from May of 2022 to May of 2023. And that's on a national level not being offset by any sort of moderation in home prices. However, in the Austin MSA, the moderation in home prices that we've seen have actually caused have actually more than offset the decline in home purchasing power. So for example, the monthly mortgage payment measured three to 4% lower 
in May of 2023 than it did in May of 2022 in the Austin MSA. And again, that's because we reached record high home prices in May of 2022. So with the with the moderation we've seen in the median sales price, again, that has helped to more than offset actually the rise in mortgage rates. So home purchasing power for buyers in the Austin MSA is actually much better than it is on a national level. Well, that's not the first time that Austin's housing market has outpaced that of the nation. It's really great to hear those month over month numbers and the demand still being there. Um, we've said for a long time in our market that there's no such thing as a summer selling season in Austin anymore. It's always a selling season here in the at the Austin market. But um, and the last thing I wanted to touch on for our monthly stats before we start looking ahead into weekly numbers is what about home values long term? That's another thing that we hear about a lot from uh, or the agents here from their clients. Uh, it, what do, Are you afraid with the falling home prices that that might impact home values and housing equity long term? So context here is especially important. Relative to May of 2019, the median sales price in the Austin MSA measured 44% higher this past May, May of 2023. So in other words, home prices are still elevated relative to pre-pandemic levels. And moreover, with our strong demand side fundamentals, a well-performing labor market and sustained high population growth, we should continue to anticipate strong demand from buyers over the long term. Of course, over the past year plus now, there have some, been some bumps in the road with higher rates. But again, speaking over the long term, we should continue, continue to see that strong demand from home buyers. With still elevated mortgage rates, buyers on the margin, those are largely going to be your first time buyers who may not be able to qualify for a mortgage loan with those higher rates may still be on the sidelines, but as con as conditions continue to readjust, we should see some of those buyers step into the foray of home ownership. So to put it succinctly, home values are still elevated relative to pre-pandemic levels, and folks who have purchased within the past few years even have seen a large uptick in home equity, and we'll, we'll be able to capture that down the line through an increase in home values, again, over the long term. Got it. So just to recap, normalizing market, looking ahead into the summer, we've still got strong demand, more purchasing power for buyers, especially those first-time buyers, and much needed um, increases in inventory to give you more options as a buyer. And still with that demand, higher close to list price. That's good news for sellers. So work with that realtor to make sure that you are setting that list price at just the right competitive amount. Um, all right. So as we close out our May numbers, don't forget, again, that May 2023 Central Texas Housing Market Report drops tomorrow morning on abor.com slash market statistics. But members, don't forget that you can also download infographics and in-depth reports of the numbers at both the city and the zip code level all throughout Central Texas at abor.com slash market statistics. There is so much there that you can share with your clients no matter what area of the region that you specialize in. So Claire, looking ahead into June, how have we been doing this first week of the summer? So as our listeners probably remember, last week we saw a surge in closed sales on a week over week basis that was probably largely due to the Memorial Day holiday. So in other words, buyers delayed closing on their homes until after the Memorial Day holiday, which was of course, Monday, May 29th. So when we compare last week's housing activity, please remember that we're still dealing with some variations due to the effect of the Memorial Day holiday on housing activity. With that being said, closed sales declined last week, but pending sales ticked up about 20% week over week. So we should anticipate an uptick in closed sales next week on a week over week basis. And then meanwhile, active listings ticked up slightly, about 3%, and new listings ticked up a more considerable, about 4.5%. So 
you know, still relatively robust activity in the housing market with some skewedness, again, from that Memorial Day holiday and its effects on, you know, buyers choosing to close, um, you know, that uptick in, in closings that we saw last well, two weeks ago now. <laughs> well, it still it sounds like it's a great start to the month. Um, looking ahead, this is a big week from an economic standpoint as well. There's a big meeting with the Fed kicking off tomorrow. What can we expect to come out of that meeting? And are there any other big economic reports that agents need to be on the lookout for? Absolutely. So Tuesday the 13th, um, the CPI numbers are going to be released, the Consumer Price Index numbers, which is our broad measure of inflation and the overall economy. So that's something, certainly something to be on the lookout for. And then the pr Producer Price Index will be released later in the week. And the Producer Price Index, as we've talked about before on the podcast, is generally a leading indicator for the Consumer Price Index. So the producer price index measures inflation essentially for suppliers of goods and services, while, of course, the consumer price index measures inflation or the cost of goods and services for the purchasers of those goods and services. So generally, as input costs for suppliers decline, we should see somewhat of a decline in the cost of goods and services. So trying to draw that relationship is going to be important. With respect to what the Fed will decide to do with the federal funds rate, it's largely anticipated that they will choose to pause with respect to any sort of rate hike, with some anticipation that they're delaying that rate hike and for their they're postponing it to their July meeting. Um, but broadly speaking, we, sh we are anticipating that there's going to be a pause in the federal funds rate hike cycle, and this should largely keep mortgage rates stable, or actually they may decline somewhat as we continue to see the market readjust after all of the volatility that ensued from the debt ceiling impasse. And then, of course, now we, we have a deal, but as listeners will remember, for a while there was that impasse. So mortgage rates should, certainly should not tick up, but will either remain flat or, or tick down slightly. Well, that's great news. And yes, we're all excited and happy to be for that impasse to be in the past. But um, looking ahead again, we have two, before we close today, two really exciting research reports that Dr. Losey is going to talk to us about. Um, first one hit your inboxes yesterday morning. It is our 2023 Central Texas International Home Buyers Report Survey. Claire, what should... Uh, should agents know about this survey and why should they take it? Sure. So this survey provides us with broad indication of housing demand from, of course, our international home buyer population. And we know that as an increasingly global city, Austin is attracting a larger and larger presence of international buyers. So this survey is really important in that, again, it helps us determine where these home buyers, these international buyers are coming from, you know, their countries of origin, what they're indicating that they are, prefer about the Austin housing market in general, i.e., why are they choosing to invest in the Austin housing market or, or purchase here for themselves? Um, as opposed to locating somewhere else, you know, it just gives, it paints us a broad brush of just general housing activity for those international buyers, and then ways that we can help realtors and agents understand how to better work with those buyers too. Right. And this is, um, someone may be listening to this and thinking, well, I don't specialize in global real estate, but it's really important that you take the survey, no matter what type of real estate you specialize in, so we can understand how that, those, that international home sales, what kind of percentage that makes up in our market. Isn't that right, Claire? Absolutely. And again, we know that the Austin MSA is increasingly a globalized region. But again, putting putting a sheer percentage to that phenomenon is important to us as well. 
very, very important. And all of that data, guys, you can take that survey now at abor.com slash survey. You can win a hundred or sorry, a thousand dollar Amazon gift card for for taking it. So that should be should be inspiration enough to take it. But that all that survey data is going to be put into our third or fourth annual Central Texas International Home Buyers Report that's going to come out this fall. So it'll be a really great tool with your agents uh, to share with your agents to help people explain, like Dr. Losey was talking about, this increased globalization and global demand of the Austin area housing market. And uh, it's great to have that work done completely in-house with our in-house economist. Also, while we're talking about that, tomorrow, 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 the registration opens for our second annual Central Texas Housing Summit on July 26th. If you attended last year's summit, whether in person or virtually, it was a huge, huge hit. And this year, it's going to be even bigger and even better. Dr. Losey is going to be releasing ABOR's first ever buy versus rent index and giving a giving a, a look ahead at the market. Claire, anything else you wanted to share for why agents should attend the summit? Sure. So just to paint a broad brush of the buy versus rent index. So of course, as mortgage rates have doubled over the past year plus now, there have been a lot of questions raised among potential home buyers as to whether home ownership is still a good tool for building wealth. And this buy versus rent index will equip realtors with the data that they need to show their buyers that, hey, look, over the long run, homeownership is still the primary mechanism by which households in the U.S. build wealth. And even despite the rise in mortgage rates, it is a more viable way for you to build wealth than it is through renting and investing in the stock market. We'll unpack all of the details, of course, at the Central Texas Housing Summit. But again, just to give you a general picture, it's it's a tool that we are designing to equip realtors, again, with the data they need to help inform their potential buyers about the best options available to them. That's awesome. I know every agent, every single one of our 18,000 agents we have in our market are going to want to have their hands on that report. So just to recap, guys, um, you can register tomorrow for our Central Texas Housing Summit at abor.com slash housing summit. Also grab our May Central Texas Housing Market Report while you are there. And lastly, take that survey for this fall, uh, our Central Texas International Home Buyers Report that will come out this fall. Take that survey today to help us make that report as big and awesome as it can be at abor.com slash survey. And you can win a thousand dollar Amazon gift card. That is all we had for this week's Driving at Home. Lots to cover, lots coming up next week. Emily will be back with us as well. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Take care, guys.